In this video, I will have a look at GNOME, the full desktop GNOME on phones, since there has been an announcement that GNOME is focusing on having a better mobile experience. While I don't have the new mobile experience compiled here, I do have the latest version of desktop GNOME running on uh, two phones. This is the original PinePhone, since the, the demo video from the GNOME team was done on the PinePhone Pro to show off what the performances of the GNOME stack uh, on this hardware. I accidentally have uh, zoomed in the camera slightly too much so the top frame is not visible. But you have the standard GNOME buttons here which are a bit cramped. And the performance of this is actually quite reasonable. And the normal controls work like the brightness control and Wi-Fi menu is here. And because this does not have the new mobile launcher, it is not really user friendly here. So let's open the GNOME settings app, which is GTK4. This will take a second since it's loading from the SD card. And this is the performance of a GTK4 app. I think I can maximize this. Not really. As you can see, the performance is not amazing, but uh, it's usable. The actual shell itself is a bit more fluid than this. And well, here you can see this hardware. This is a Revision 1.2B uh, PinePhone, I think. Let's open Postmark Test Fix. Again, this takes a second. And there it is. Since this window is slightly larger, by default it will launch in full screen here. And well, it works exactly as it normally works in Fosh. And the only thing is missing here is the Fosh panel since this is GNOME. And stuff like the GTK theming control works just fine. Let's jump to a console here. The console itself is also very usable here. It's just that the keyboard that is in GNOME is miles worse than the one in Fosh at the moment. It does not register key presses that well, since uh, it seems like the frame rate of the keyboard is very low, which means you have to hold keys down slightly before they actually register. Let me quickly fast forward through this process because it takes a while to enter <laughs> the required info here, especially when you cannot see your input. And now HTOP is installed. Let's launch that. And one of the neat features is that the keyboard pushes up the window so we can actually see things below the keyboard. Well, uh, this is a pretty rough demo of what GNOME does on the original PinePhone. Let's switch to uh, Samsung. This is the Samsung Galaxy S2, which also has pretty good mainline support. And the main difference here is that this is an older 32-bit CPU. But the upside here is that it has a lower resolution, so that should make rendering faster. And the GPU in this should be faster. Here I will show the GDM log login process, which is even harder to use due to the smaller screen. And it will take some seconds for GNOME to actually pop up here. And here you can already see the cursor. Yes, GNOME. Let's skip the tutorial here. And well, it looks like GNOME actually performs a bit better on the Samsung Galaxy S2. Um, 
downside here is that I've used a slower SD card in this case. Which will make loading it even slower. Yep, performance is better. Let's see the specs of this device. And maybe I should open Postmark Test Fix to show the more detailed specs. Um, right, no Wi-Fi loaded here. Due to scaling differences, for smart vest tweaks is actually smaller on this screen. But when the scaling is set one step higher, then everything will be too large. Not everything has an ideal screen size. Well, here are the more detailed specifications for this device. Well, let's try changing the theme. I think this is an OLED panel even. Yes. Let's see if I can get the console on here. And this is also windowed. It looks like the touch panel is slightly buggy here and I cannot drag the window. And not I cannot full screen it because this is a GTK4 application that does not full screen on double tap on the title bar. I do believe that the when the management gestures work with the four finger pin zoom, yep. And here I can close windows. Well, yeah, not really that much more to show off of the base compositor and base GNOME experience. The only thing to show up is apps. I also have Firefox here. Let's see how that performs. The full desktop Firefox is a bit heavy for this old device, but it should launch. And also because this is not Forge, we are not loading the mobile configuration for Firefox here. So this is the full desktop version. Which means touch scrolling is not enabled by default. Let's get through this. Oh yes, the Dart team. Nice. And yeah, well, no scrolling. But um, yeah, this is Firefox on the device in GNOME. Well, this is the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully when GNOME merges their new mobile support, I can also show off how that performs on this hardware. Thanks for watching.